start going off track, it can be very hard to get them back on track and quite detrimental to the to the rowers as well. So the mighty Brooks are often the people to beat here. We saw the Cambridge men come up against the Brooks men this morning in the Ladies Plate Cup, and actually the Cambridge crew were able to beat the Brooks crew. Uh, it's a tall order any time to come up against Brooks at Henley, so let's see what the Cambridge women can do there. The hands are up from the coxes as they straighten their boats, and they're going to come under the umpire's orders and get away. I'd love to hear the sound of an eight starting the race race. I know if you haven't been to the start of the start of the races at Henley, I would highly recommend going down for the start of the eights because it goes from dead silent to, to loud and noisy and so much power coming out. Absolutely, Grace, from nothing to everything, and that's exactly what we see here. The umpire throttle to the floor to catch up with those boats as they power away from the start of Henley Regatta, passing the island and onto the boon part of the course. They'll get a little bit of crosswind here. We've seen many crews affected that by that this afternoon. Brooks off to their normal blistering start. Let's see what the Cambridge crew can do. Uh, they've trained all winter for the boat race and then they, well, here they are at Henley rising to the challenge, but Brooks are away faster. Yeah, it's a really good start from Brooks, and I think this this is um, probably relatively unusual to be able to get this much out of the start, so I'm not sure if the Cambridge women will be too pleased with how they've come out, but it is a long race, and you saw it a lot yesterday. There was a few eights races that the crews really, really tried to get to the barrier fast and, and hope that they could just hold on, and, and sometimes that lead switches, so it, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much effort has gone into the Brooks start to get them out this far in front. So some of the best racing at Henley over the years, I think, has been in the junior women's quads. And as we've introduced more women's eights events over the, over the recent uh, years, we've seen some brilliant close racing in the eights. But it's a critical time now for Cambridge. Cambridge University sitting with overlap on Brooks. But at this early part of the race, uh, race as we, we, we're passing towards the barrier, Brooks are really trying to break that into a clear water lead. They really are. And actually, this is a, a little bit similar to the Cambridge's boat race. They, they got dropped quite quite a bit out of the start so so they know they can do it but obviously this is a lot shorter race and I think if you lose contact this early on it can be a tall order to get it back and they're looking long but it's also very hard to have the confidence to get into your rhythm when you know you're that far behind already and it takes a lot of um, I guess commitment to what you've decided to do to push onto a rhythm where the other crews are already walking away so it'll be a, a tough ask for the Cambridge Coxon to be getting that from their crew at the moment. Yeah, so looking back, Temple Island looks down on these two brilliant women's crews. Oxford Brooks, a really punchy start. I think they decided to try to break Cambridge's spirit early on. Cambridge, as you say, Grace, no, no, no strangers to being behind off the start, but the boat race, four and a half miles. This is rather shorter, just over 2,100 metres, and so they've got much less time to respond, so they can't afford to get too far behind. You can see from that marker there, 637 metres into the race for some random reason, uh, there's clear water already. Yeah, and I think this is quite an interesting view when you can see both of the crews. It looks like the Oxford Brooks crew is just having a little bit more time in the water in, in a good way, and they look like they're sort of swinging back and leaning back a little bit, whereas the Cambridge women look a little bit more upright. It looks like they're a little bit more onto the next stroke, onto the next stroke, whereas this this right here is quite long and strong and powerful, and you can tell they kind of just sit back for a second and then let the boat do some hard work, and that is the main goal in rowing is to get the boat to do as much work for you as possible, and I think this is a really good show of them doing that here. Yeah, really strong performance by Brooks. They really have opened up in the next stage of the race and quite a lead over Cambridge, who've got a bunch of work to do. Cambridge looking still pretty coherent, actually, aren't they? Because I guess they've trained really hard together. They've competed against each other to get into that top boat or into the reserve boat, and then they have to combine. That's one of the things I love, particularly about ace racing, is that kind of combination of competition and collaboration. Yeah, and, and, and eight is a lot of people to get together, so you, need, you know you need a really big bunch of... Uh, like a big pool of athletes to, to pick from and, and the goal is to probably have about 16 athletes that can all slot into the boat that then whittle down to the top eight and you want everyone to be rowing the same footprint and rowing the same blueprint and, and they, they're still doing really well. They still look quite cohesive. Their blades are dropping in together but they just don't look quite as long as probably the Brooks crew do who are out in front and it's, I think it's paying off in, this sort of, in these sort of conditions as well. 
Yeah, so Cambridge still rowing quite cohesively, as you say, but Brooks have just got that kind of languidness now that comes from the comfort of the lead that they've got mm -hmm. here, which is a challenge for them. One of the things we talked about um, over the last few days at Henley is the systems that these clubs build to kind of produce winners time and again. And Brooks have obviously built that system over many years. Cambridge under Rob Baker, one club, the men and women training together. They've seen some real success in the boat race. But what we haven't seen at both Oxford and Cambridge is those crews kind of following through into the summer because the boat race, as you know, is such an intensive winter competition it's hard to persuade people to sacrifice the entire year in that way isn't it i think it is and, and there's so much emphasis on that boat race and i know even like mentally and emotionally a lot goes into it and then you that sort of finishes and and a lot of people are like oh i need a break now whereas a lot of other crews henley is their pinnacle and this is what they're working towards and and obviously it means a lot for this cambridge crew but it just sits a little bit different in their season you're absolutely right there's something psychological isn't there for brooks henley is everything really kind of aiming to dominate as they have done in some recent years and it's a brilliant dominant row from these young women from uh, oxford brooks for cambridge that intensive peak the boat race is so so important as we look at the cambridge crew here stroked by Claire Hall the daughter of uh, one of the Cambridge men that I rowed with many years ago Duncan Hall and Rachel Murray another great uh, rower for the Cambridge women so, with so many uh, of the crews here we see generations of athletes inspired and you know maybe came here as a young child and saw Henley and wanted to, to come and compete here just as we have from athletes around the world yeah I think my first time I came to Henley I was like wow I want to come back every year I think it's such a cool event and and when you maybe grow up with or you get a little bit of a taste of it, it, it sort of sets the passion and regardless of kind of how you go throughout the week I think there's so many great experiences win or lose and that's why you get athletes come back every single year because they want the glory and they want to to, to witness um, Henley and all of its chaos. Yeah, so many people experience Henley as an athlete just in the qualifying races. We had so many crews uh, enter this year that many were um, not able to get through the qualifying rounds, but even that is a privilege to be in. But then to come here and watch this kind of racing now, and the conditions have started to get better, thankfully, after a really tough morning. It's still quite blowy, still quite changeable, but at least the sun is beating down on the shoulders of Cambridge and Oxford books as they come towards the uh, final stage of the race now, the last quarter of the race, the last four or five hundred metres. Oxford Brooks have been able to relax and uh, really, I suppose, start to think about the race pattern they want to have tomorrow. Yeah, and I really, really like how they're rowing. I've always, I've always really look, um, liked how the Oxford Brooks women row. I think that's credit to their program and how and how they're coached and how they're trained. But they just do it really well. I think they're quite efficient. They, in an eight, you can have the tendency to really, really want to go to the ne next stroke and want to make it feel hard. But they look like they just have the confidence to sit and let the boat do the work for them and and that's sort of across all of their crews which is obviously it's easier when you're out in front like they are at the moment but um you can still see it coming in when they when they're slowly dropping the rate and i can't wait to see limit maybe their full potential tomorrow yeah i agree with you completely there's something about the patience of letting the boat work for you and i think for me it's something it took me years to sort of begin to discover and appreciate uh, i think you particularly with the pairs experience and the eight together you've got that sort of feel for a boat and that you can encourage others in the boat to learn it but so cambridge university delighted to see them competing at henley and getting through to semi-finals day after the incredible campaigns they put into the boat race but as so often in the past it's oxford brooks booking a spot in the final. This is the Ireland Challenge Cup uh, for women and Cambridge University. Well, no shame on them, but they just didn't have the pace, the patience and the power to match Oxford Brooks. So that's a win for Oxford Brooks University A crew against Cambridge University in the Student Women's Eight event, the Ireland Challenge Cup.